The last few videos that I did were about safety and safety statistics and things that you can do to improve your motorcycle safety. And that last one there did really well when I broke it up into shorts, but as a long form video, didn't do that well at all. So you have to excuse the voice. I'm recovering from uh, being sick, but I thought I would switch tasks a little bit here and talk about how a guy who was a BMW faithful ended up with a Kawasaki W800. I figure we can start that journey with why I was a BMW faithful. And that basically comes down to lineage. I'll give it a quick 10 seconds here so we can cover the intro and then we'll be back. So my mother, uh, who is German, grew up with a father who rode motorcycles and he had a sidecar and they did touring um, all over Germany and um, motorcycles weren't a scary thing to her like they were for most parents. She understood that there were risks involved but I have three brothers and all of us at some point as teenagers had a motorcycle. It just was kind of a given. That's what it would be. And uh, my first bike obviously wasn't a BMW, but my second motorcycle was. It was a 1972 R75-5. It did not have the toaster tank. It was a, a plain uh, metal tank with gray paint. It had not been very well taken care of and it was exceptionally affordable and so that's that's why I ended up buying it. And that particular motorcycle I was hit on. Uh, the one primary reason I lost all faith in the loud pipe save lives uh, trope was that it had very loud pipes due to rust holes and it wasn't silencing anything. They were, you know, it was loud. And the guy who hit me hit me from the rear, where all the sound is going, and uh, dispelled any illusion I had that motorists use their ears to do anything other than listen to the stereo or their phone conversation or whatever it is that they want to listen to. They do not, in any way, shape, or form, drive with their ears. We can talk about the accident at a later point, but uh, it's non-material for this video. The next bike I had was a 1984 BMW R100 RTP, which is a police model which had been imported from the UK to the US. The person who did that repainted it, which is kind of a drag because it was police white, and they painted it kind of an, a pearlized off-white, but not very pearl, and then a dark blue, um, kind of a half and half thing. In doing that, um, they also replaced where the uh, siren and lights were with um, just leaving the holes for the siren in the fairing and then replacing the lights with running lights. And so I had running lights in the forward vents on that bike. And that bike and I, uh, it had 60,000 miles when I purchased it and when I gifted it to a friend. I sold it for a dollar, but for all intents and purposes, I gifted it. It had uh, 330,000 miles on it, so I put an, an additional 270,000 miles on it. It had work done, no question, but it was just a workhorse. And I had such a relationship with that motorcycle that I knew exactly what it would do in whatever conditions. And I, at the time I was running I had been using Continentals and I switched over to the Metzler 880s and really enjoyed uh, the traction that those gave in both the wet and the dry. And from there I went to a, a 98 K1200 RS which was really not good for passengers and I had 
a family with young children at the time, so I traded that out for an 03 uh, BMW R1200 CLC. And that was really great for passengers, so much so that my stepdaughter fell asleep on a ride and we had to pull over and uh, get them ice cream, the kids. Uh, for some reason, ice cream wired them for sound, so. Uh, super, super great, super comfortable for passenger. I still have that bike, and uh, when I bought it, it had, I don't know, 35,000 miles on it. Uh, the previous owner had done a lot of wacky things to it, um, and that bike has close to 100,000 miles on it now. And I also got a 2011 uh, G650 GS that basically people used it to learn on just enough to uh, up to another adventure bike. They, I guess the thumper wasn't good enough for them and so they decided to go somewhere else. And I originally did that because they were dirt roads out by where I lived and at the time was in Eastern Colorado, um, just east of the Denver metropolitan area or on the border of the Denver metropolitan area. And so I figured an adventure bike would help me in my favorite game, where does that road go? And then uh, moved to Vermont and was really just enthralled with the amount of great motorcycle culture here and uh, came across this retro bike on YouTube, the Kawasaki W800. I had no idea about the W1, W2, W3. I had no idea about the W650. Uh, the advertising on it wasn't great, but I immediately fell in love with that beautiful bubble cam drive engine. And uh, the first opportunity I had to find one, I went and test drive one. And uh, the story goes from there. But uh, I just figured I'd give a little history on the falling in love with the W series. It is my primary motorcycle now. Uh, the CL, I don't have uh, passengers anymore that want to ride with me, so it's a beautiful mile leading highway bike, and every once in a while I do want to get on the highway for a long stretch, but on the, the twisties I'd much rather take the W with the Michelin Road Classics, and so uh, that's what I do. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do leave a like and subscribe. It's the best way to help this tiny little channel. Keep the rubber side down, the shiny side up, and keep it wheeled.